So we're nearly at 2.30. I can see yes. we've got some people joined in to, to watch. And I'm sure we'll see some more come in. If anyone wants to say hello, then pop yourselves in the chat. Um, when we get to, in a couple of minutes, uh, Craig, if you can just do a quick introduction to yourself and then just give me a nod about when to hit play on the talk. Okay. And then um, we will sort of mute ourselves and hide ourselves away while the talk is playing. Uh, Craig will be here, so if you have questions, pop them in the chat. We'll probably save them for the Q&A unless they're just a single word answer sort of questions. Um, or unless I've got anything completely wrong. That's, <laughs> that's one possibility. But also feel free to share anything else that is relevant to the talk that you think other people might be interested in. We get some great, great chat going in, in some of these sessions. Um, and then we'll open it up again for Q&A and pop back on the screen after the recording's played. So um, I've put the link in case you want to see the talk with captions. You can go over to YouTube and turn them on there. And then they should work when you come back. But you can watch on YouTube if you want and then pop back to the Q&A. But otherwise, we'll be streaming it live here. Uh, so... Craig, do you want to kick off with your introduction and let me know when you want me to hit play? Right, well, thanks everyone for coming along. I'm not sure how many people are here, uh, but uh, my name is Craig Buckler. I'm a web developer and an author, uh, and I do various things to make some money. Uh, but this is about the JavaScript Internationalization API, which is one you may have heard of or you may have uh, come across, but... Um, not that many people know about it, but it's really, really useful. So uh, without further ado, please start the video. Thank you, Craig. That was um, a really interesting tour of just some quirks of language, if nothing else. <laughs> uh, so uh, as the, the compliments are pouring in, we need some more questions pouring in, guys, for, for Craig. So uh, I'll get the ball rolling. So presumably when you're sort of dealing with these switches with the API is going to work more easily with single words or, or short phrases? What, what happens when you get into more complex kind of language translations and having nuance and the possibilities of words that, that may mean something a bit unexpected in another language? Yeah, you'll struggle. Um, I, I think that's the thing. I, I, I think if you can avoid it, that's what my point of my talk was. Internationalization is really, really hard and you're never gonna get everything perfectly. There's some great machine learning tools out there and you know, which will translate a page and translate a text, but you can never rely on them. And as soon as you show it to an actual native speaker who's in France or Germany or wherever, they're gonna notice problems. So, but I think with, as I say, with apps, if we're just talking about presenting data, if you're looking at, uh, you know, financial data or foreign exchanges or something like that, then there's no reason not to localize numbers and currencies and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I don't want to make it sound simple because it really isn't. Internationalization is really, really difficult and far more difficult than you expect because we all just have this notion as, you know, dog in French is chan and we just replace it and everything will work brilliantly and of course that's that's not the case um but if we are looking at data dates numbers uh possibly plurals but i'd avoid those as well uh then you can you can go a long way have you had any particularly funny sort of examples you've come across that you haven't covered already in the in the talk no i don't think so because again i've it's only recently i think this this api has been around a while and i'll just actually post a link in because i think it helps to uh work out which browsers are supported. And you'll see from that table there, there's actually a lot of support for this. But I think it's only been the last sort of year or two that it's actually been in the browsers properly. Uh, there's been bits missing, and you could never quite work out which which bits were missing in which browsers. And even, even Firefox got one of the, the methods in August. So it's now pretty up, much up to 100% everywhere. Um, so it's good support. But in the past, I've just avoided it like everyone else does, I think it's, and uh, the way I've avoided it is not putting in like number punctuation or if I put in dates, I've used, you know, why, 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 MMDD as a way of just making it sort of more obvious that it's, it's a date, but it's not in a format that you necessarily expect. And, uh, um, I've been asked in the past, you know, I've had clients who said to me, you know, can we, can we internationalize this because we've now got some, some clients in 
career or something and i've said yeah but it's gonna be a lot of work and it is a lot of work if you try and retrospectively apply it but now it's a bit less effort and i wish this had been around you know sort of five or six years ago for some of my other projects great well i can see andy's put a question in the chat and i i will leave you guys to doing some Q&A, so make sure you take this advantage to ask Craig some more questions. Um, Craig, I'll leave you to to handle that if you're happy. Um, yes, no problem. Uh, so, And then Andy. I may see you guys back here. So at 3.30, we've got Colin Dart is the next session on, the, on track two. But Craig, you're welcome to chat away and answer as many questions as yes. people want to throw at you. Oh, crikey. Okay, right. All right. I'll see <laughs> Thanks, what I can everyone. do. Uh, so, yes, thanks, Andy. Uh, I like the time tag tip. Presumably, best practice is to localize using the JS API and inject that into the tag. Uh, oh, are there similar semantic tags for other bits of the API, such as currency? Uh, probably not, uh, is my answer to that. There are certainly things like time. Yes, time, you can, you've got an obvious uh, thing for putting a date into there, and it's all set up, you know, as appropriately something like a currency i don't think there's an equivalent html tag so what i would suggest is that you actually use a data attribute on whatever tag you're using so if you're displaying a, a currency in a table for example then maybe in your td you would have a data currency equals one two three and then you can apply that one two three you can grab that one two three and actually fill in the content um, in those particular cases, I, I think it would work quite well, uh, especially if you're, if you, if you certainly generate it server side, the users will notice no sort of flicker of content change. And if you're using a client side framework, then you can do it quite well there. Uh, the DOM, changing the DOM dynamically, I would only do that if there's no other alternative, if you've got a page, which has already been generated. Um, but I think if it's, if you can identify particular elements in your DOM by either because they have the appropriate HTML element or they've got a class or they've got a data attribute, then that's clearly the best way to do it. I wouldn't, although you could go through the DOM, use some regular expressions to say, oh, is that a number? Should I translate it into Spanish? Then yeah, you could do it. But I think especially on mobile browsers, you'd be hitting some pretty serious performance problems quite quickly. Uh, there was another, I don't know if that answers it for you, uh, Andy. Hopefully it does. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll catch up with you at some point. There was a, another question from Tony uh, saying, do you have any specific tips to consider when creating conversational interfaces for internationalization? So is this, Tony, is that like the chat we've got here? Do you mean that kind of thing? Because uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's the, answer, it's the answer to that one. I, 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 I got no idea. I mean, if you could mark something as a currency or a, or a number or a date, then potentially. But I think conversational interfaces, because they're so instant, they're going to be quite hard. Um, so if you're doing that as a project, best of luck. Uh, right, so Richard's got a question. Uh, with the ordinal strings, are they translated to ST? No. Um, so you you get out this one few too many and you you get that as a string for every language regardless but then you have to work out what the language needs it needs so with one you add a, was it an st onto it i think um and with a two you add an nd and with a another it's the on the end of it so you have to know English to be able to do that. And the same happens if, if you use the tool that I provided. Um, let me just get a link for that again. Um, and with me a second. You'll see that, you know, if you if you put in a one, they pretty much one is returned by all of them apart from the sort of Japanese and Vietnamese. But if we, uh, oh, actually, even if I'm using ordinals, so if I'm just using a two, you'll see that Spanish has got other and 
and same with three as well. So it looks as though they all have their different rules. And I don't know enough about the other languages to say in Spanish, when it's got a three on the end of it, you do this. Um, but that's why I think it's probably one to avoid if you can. Um, uh, so uh, from Andy, uh, any standard tokenization frameworks? So I think, I mean, obviously most of the sort of templating libraries have some sort of uh some sort of way of replacing tokens uh which is so if you're using something like esj or um dot or handlebars whatever then that will probably make it easier because you can supply a json file or whatever it is some sort of data source and actually get it to fill it in um but certainly things like get text i think if you're using a lot of text then something like get text and get text is sort of it's been around longest and probably is the one I would suggest using just because it creates language files that that translators are probably used to using. So, but it's still very hard. I mean, you're still you're still generating a piece of text. You know, if you you have a piece of text in there saying you know number of cats, then you have to get a translator to translate that. But even the context of that can be lost if you're not careful. Um, so it's there's no magic solutions don't underestimate it it's really difficult uh and it, I, I you know i i don't want to sort of belittle it because it is it the intl api makes things easy for data you know and you can use things like lists it makes it a, a bit more straightforward data numbers currencies that kind of thing it's, it makes it really straightforward but anything else once you start actually looking at text and generating text then you're into the realms of right well we need somebody to translate this really uh rich has just said as part of the php documentation team supporting 20 languages is hard i promise well yes it is it is and i i, I'm, I think that's the thing it does look most of us think it's going to be easier than it is uh and we avoid it we avoid it till the end and it's just too late it's it's like one of these many other things you just you just assume that you sort of replace one word with another and it's not it's far more subtle and nuanced than that so um if you can do it straight away then do it uh, uh but i i think as i say with the with the case of apps you can generally avoid lots and lots of text if you're presenting data if you've got like i don't know an exercise app or something like that you probably don't have to have much in the way of words and and long pieces of text you can show a picture of a bike and you know hopefully that's fairly recognizable you still be careful about icons and because as i said at the beginning people people assume icons are understandable by everyone they're not then they're, they're clearly not but with something like an exercise app you would hope people would recognize running and cycling and uh so things like you know your target of ten thousand meters you can get the spelling of that and the actual number itself formatted appropriately for whatever region you're in um but it's really going to depend on your app because it's you know how much text you need it's going to make you know the more text you need the exponentially more difficult it's going to be to localize but uh yeah it is tricky uh any other questions from anybody uh by all means use the tool i'll just uh i'll just get the link back in um so I wrote this primarily for myself because it's so difficult to remember the options and the and it is a bit of a weird API when you first start using it, but once you've done it a few times, it's it's remarkably straightforward. And I I would not I I would do it in every project from now on. I would just add this in as automatically because it makes no sense not to. You know, you can localize a date and a time and a currency to whatever you need. Um, and it stops a lot of confusion and hopefully reduces support costs and all that sort of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully uh, it's it's helped. Apologies, it's a, it was a lot to sort of go through because there's a lot of different options to it. And, uh, and I glossed over some of the ones like the things like comparisons because it is it gets very, very tricky uh, just to know what's going on unless you happen to know Russian or some other language that you can compare against. And I don't speak any other languages really i can get by in you know ordering beers as i say but that's about as far as i can go um 
but uh, yeah, hope it's. I hope you found it useful. Um, I'll be in the um, <laughs> Unicode versus Code Page comparison panic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so it's it's all of this stuff. It's all there. That's the good thing. It's you. You can do some, you know, stuff that was remarkably difficult a few years ago is now possible. Uh, even things like adding S to a noun. Um, you know, we've all got bits of code which, you know, if this is one, don't add an S. And if it's not one, add an S. And even that doesn't work because if it's minus one, then you shouldn't be adding an S either. But, um, but, but yeah, hopefully you'll find it useful and, uh, and let me know how you get on. Just send me a message on Twitter or something and, uh, and uh, let me know if you found it useful or save you some time or if you had any, fu had any funny experiences with the API because it is a bit weird. It is a bit weird at first, but very useful. If that's everything, I'll um, I'll log off. I'll go into the networking, actually, if anyone wants to uh, catch up in there because um, I haven't tried it yet. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. I'll catch up with you soon.